Once again, we welcome you back to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center here in Baton Rouge. It's time to talk some more Michigan basketball with head coach Kim Arico as Michigan is set to take on LSU tomorrow night, 630 tomorrow night Central Time, the game televised by ESPN as Michigan got past UNLV on Friday. Coach, I know you had a chance to watch the second game and then a practice. How did everything go as you lead up now on this off day to tomorrow night? Uh, it was great. We tried to enjoy the moment yesterday for a, a little bit um, and then get back to work. Uh, LSU is a great team and um, tomorrow is going to be a, a great game. They have an incredible program. So we got a chance to practice and, and prep for them. Obviously, they're led by two superstars, um, but they really have a balanced team around them as well and are dangerous in so many ways. For those of you joining us via Zoom, please hit the raise hand button. If you have a question for Coach, and we will come to you. For those of you here in person, we will pass the microphone around. Please introduce yourself and your affiliation, and we'll open the floor up to Coach for, to, for questions for Coach. Corey Rolden here at WBRZ. Coach, have you watched some film of how y'all guarded Angel Reese? Y'all faced her three times, I believe. And what did y'all do to make her struggle so much in those games? Yeah, um, we, we definitely watched that. I had... Uh, my assistant coach, Val Nainima, this is her scout, and you know we talked about you know getting those clips from last year um, just to show uh, our team those clips. And uh, we also had a, an All-American who's graduated and playing the WNBA right now. She she guarded her, so that helped a little bit. Um, but I, I think you know we did a great job on her um, I, two times that we played her. But she's also um, improved a tremendous amount. You know, everyone's freshman year is challenging in many different ways, and she was a freshman going against Nas Hillman, who was a senior last year, and I think Nas kind of had the advantage. But she's grown so much, she's matured so much, and her game has really exploded this season. She's not the same player, but I do think that it's helpful for us to see as many clips as possible um, when people had success and when she really had success and, and what, you know, what we can do against her. How have you seen her game kind of improve over this last year at LSU? Yeah, well, one, I think she's finishing um, way, way better. Um, she's her, her percentage is off the charts, but her rebounding, I mean, she was a great rebounder last year as well, but you don't really see many rebounders at this level have 20 plus rebounds a game or 15 rebounds a game. That's absolutely incredible. So she has a, a gift um, to go get the basketball, a motor to the ball, um, but just her presence on the defensive end as well, her ability to block shots. Um, she's grown, and I, I knew she could always handle the basketball, but her ability to start the break, her ability to lead the transition, um, her decision-making has gotten a lot better. Um, she's just grown in every, at, in every facet of her game, and, and she's playing at a really high level. Uh, Matt Trent, also with WBRZ TV here in Baton Rouge. A couple of your players were talking about you saw LSU's type of athleticism and speed in the non-conference. Um, did you get a lot of this during Big Ten play? And, is, and if so, is there anything you can liken it to? And how does that better prepare you for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, they're they're long, um, they're fast, they have tremendous size, and they have tremendous speed. Um, you know, we, we played Baylor earlier this year who's, you know, their guard play is similar. They have some, they have some good post players as well. They don't have Angel Reese. Um, but our league, maybe not the same type of athlete, but speed and post play, um, Indiana, uh, has been terrific. They're they're one of the top teams in the country. Um, Ohio State has that type of athleticism. Um, you know, so there are Iowa has some really great players, an inside outside combo in terms of a point guard and a post play, um, just like LSU. So maybe not the same. Um, but definitely, I, I think the other thing that these three specifically that were up here is, you know, they've had an opportunity in the last, you know, four years to play in the NCAA tournament where they've, you know, faced Baylor when Kim was at Baylor or faced um, Tennessee a couple of years ago in the bubble. So we've played against different teams um, that have that size and that athleticism. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, uh, WAP here in Baton Rouge. I think Coach Mulkey's kind of striving to get what you have, and that is a group of players that have played together for a long time and have experience. So what does that mean, uh, you know, at this stage of the season? Yeah, I, I think that's really a great point. And obviously, I, I know she spoke a little bit about it yesterday, how, you know, we feel like 
we've played against each other a, a bunch probably in the in the last few years. Um, but I remember 2005, I think I was on the All-American committee and I was a young coach and she was in the final four with an All-American. It was one of the first times that I had met her. But I had always watched from afar how she built her program and how she built her culture and how her teams played. And I think, you know, she was able to do that and sustain that with consistency year in and year out at Baylor. Now she's only been here, you know, a short period of time. It, it takes time, but what she's done in a short period of time is, is incredible. Um, so, but I do think there is something to be said for experience. Um, and the, these three that are up here have had that experience and have been able to make runs in tournaments and have played, um, you know, with each other for a long period of time. Even Layla, who's, who's only a sophomore, you know, Emily was laughing at them because, you know, our three guards, they know each other and they play off each other. And, and Emily was laughing about the guards, but she's our, she's the smartest kid on the floor and she sees things on the defensive end before they happen. And she's always in the right spot and, and she is always in help defense. And I, I just think her IQ um, has really kind of been, you know, the, the foundation, the core of what our defense is built on. Um, but that there's no substitute for experience and, um, you know, they're going to get there. I don't feel, I'm sorry, but I don't feel bad for them. <laughs> um, they will get there. They, uh, you know, haven't played together for a long period of time because most of them are young or um, just getting here, but they're still terrific players and, and have a great program. Chessa Boucher here in Baton Rouge with WVLA. Coach Mulkey joked last night saying it always seems to end up being you guys going against each other in the postseason. How have those battles been for you? Yeah, um, you know, we they've been battles. And I always – I wish one of these times, maybe one of these times, we're going to get Mulkey up to Ann Arbor. You know, it's nice when you get to play on your uh, home court. Um, and I know I was here yesterday, the crowd and kind of the – the intensity and the advantage of being home is incredible. And, and I know that the program here has such rich tradition. I followed it when I was a young kid with Coach Gunter. But, like, it's back and there's fire and there's intensity. And, and she's built, you know, she's got it back, um, which is really exciting. But like I said, I've always, you know, watched her, studied her um, as a young coach coming up and just kind of how she built teams and how she kept that consistency and how hard she got her players to play, I think, you know, is something that our, our players really pride themselves on as well. Um, we want to be the toughest team out there. We want to play incredibly hard and we want to play together and we and we always talk about wanting to do it um you know for Michigan we want to do it for Michigan for for something bigger than ourselves and and I feel like you know um this program the LSU program does that as well um in a short period of time so yeah we have a little bit of history it does seem like you know we we um get to play against each other I know for the rest of the world it probably feels like it's a few years and I didn't realize that until I looked at the pictures of my children who were this big and are now this big we feel like we never age um, so uh, that made me realize it was a couple of years ago. But um, I, I think it's kind of a great thing at the end of the day. It means that we've both been in um, women's college basketball for a period of time, and to keep competing at this level is pretty special. Hi, Kim. Uh, Corey Diaz with the USA Today Network. Uh, kind of going back to the question about players with experience, uh, how, do you, how do you approach kind of the transfer portal and – and how has that kind of changed, you know, kind of what we've seen over the last couple of years when we get to this time of year? You have some lower seeds winning some games against some higher seeds. It, it is, is experience as important as it was 10 years ago, or is there a way to kind of circumvent that now? Yeah, I mean, those are those are great questions, and uh, this, is a, this is an interesting time in college athletics for sure. Um, the landscape has certainly, certainly changed. Um, but it's, it's been a little bit different, um, for us and it's a little bit different at Michigan. 
Um, just from, from an academic perspective, it's not a fit for everyone. So, you know, in terms of we, we're really selective in terms of the transfer portal. So what we've kind of built our program on is people um, that buy into the process and people that buy into improving. And, you know, Emily Kaiser is a great example of a, a kid that came to Michigan and, and backed up an All-American and backed up a four-year starter and didn't really play until the end of her junior year. And here she is as a fifth year first team all conference. Um, so I, I think those things really make me smile as a coach. And those things are things I get really excited about is, man, pe players are getting developed and players are improving and our team is improving. The scary part, the opposite side of that, is, um, you know, when you lose that experience you know, other teams are bringing in transfers that have that experience right away. Um, and and that's, that's the reality of it, though. And I think that has helped a lot of teams become great quick. Um, I think it's a different, it's not the same philosophy as building a, a program and building something that's going to have that type of consistency year in and year out. It's, it's just different. But um, it's interesting. I don't know, you know, I, I can't comment on it either way. I just know what we do. Um, but it's just the landscape has certainly changed, and it'll be interesting to see in the next few years where things go. Eliza Kushner with the Michigan Daily. I have two questions. One just clarifying. When you are talking about, like, the smartest defender, was that about Emily or Layla earlier? <laughs> no. Emily is like the glue. Emily is our old lady staple in the, in the, middle, of our, uh, in the middle of our defense. She just... She's such a um, such a high IQ player, and she just knows where to be and how to help people out. And and even when Nas was here, and Nas was an incredible athlete, like Emily was always in the right spot to make sure that she was able to always help Nas out too. So um, yeah, Emily is like the glue to our defense. And second one, full 180. But you know, people keep talking about you're both named Kim. You're also both on the opposite ends of the outfit spectrum in terms of coaches. You're more Jordans and hoodie, and she's <laughs> glitter and sparkles. Do you have anything special planned for tomorrow? Oh my gosh, um, I can't keep that pace. I don't know how she does it. Uh, you know, I used to be pre-COVID. I was the heels and the dress up, and then COVID hit, and I'm like, oh my goodness, my feet feel so good, and my legs aren't screaming at the end of the night. I don't wake up with pain in, in my calves anymore. So um, I'm completely Jordans. Um, it's nice to have the Jordan brand as well. Uh, it's a good look. It's a good fit, as the kids say. Um, but uh, yeah, I have I have something special plans for tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be. I'm not going to be Kim. No one is Kim. I mean, I'm the other Kim, but no one is uh, Mulkey. So um, she has her she has her own look, and it and it works for her. Brett Martel with AP. So uh, I, maybe you do this too. You know, sometimes coaches will have an interesting way of highlighting certain plays in the film review and emphasizing those to their team. Um, and I, this might have been asked before I got in, but so there was one play yesterday, you probably remember where Leah Brown dove on the floor and didn't succeed in getting the ball. And so in terms of the stat sheet or possession, it was inconsequential. Um, but in terms of a tangibles, maybe it meant more. So Kim Mulkey <laughs> showed that play to her team specifically. And I'm wondering, you know, when people are talking about the Kim versus Kim matchup, the fact that one of your players did it and the fact that the other Kim picked up on it and showed it to her team, does that kind of uh, show any, in your mind, similarities about your approach to the intangibles? Yeah, um, I was telling, uh, I don't know, maybe one of our players about uh, about this last year. I went to the draft um, with Nas Hillman, and um, Nalissa Smith was at the draft. And as soon as I came in, her mom came running up to me and uh, she's like, I, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. And I, I was like, OK. And um, she's like, we just hated playing against your team. She said it was always like, oh, no, we got to play against against Michigan again because of how hard your team played. And that was something that Coach Mulkey always prided herself on is we're going to have a team that plays incredibly hard and and we're going to be, you know, the, the hardest working team on the floor. Um, 
But she's like, when we faced Michigan, we felt like there was another team that was really challenging us and doing those intangible things the way that we were expected to do it. And that in that moment, she was like, you know, we never wanted to play you. And and Kim wasn't there anymore at that time. Um, but that was, I, I think that just spoke volumes um, for her to say that just about our program, because that is something that is a staple. You know, we, we always say that we want to be the hardest working team in America. Well, how do you measure that? Everyone says that, you know. So yesterday we talked about our stickers a little bit. And I, I think you guys were in here and, and the intangibles. Um, but you got to see a few of those plays. I mean, Maddie Nolan stepped in and she said, Coach, I've never been hit so hard when she tried to take that charge. And it was called off her foot. It wasn't a call either way. Um, but she stepped in there to do that and she didn't get, she goes, am I still going to get a sticker? Like that was, that was the first question last night. Am I going to get a sticker for that even though the referee didn't call that a, a charge? And, and Leah Brown, it's, it's funny, but um, our, we have a team of people that decide if it's sticker worthy or not. Leah Brown didn't get a sticker today. For I haven't told her yet. But when I read the stickers last night, I'm going, I go, golly, they didn't give Leah a sticker for that. She sold out and dove across the floor. But we say, you know, you you have to come up with it. So we add another layer to it. Um, but I but I'm happy that you know they saw and the rest of the world saw that our team is willing to sell out and willing to sacrifice and make those type of plays because we do believe that those are those could be difference makers and um i think that lsu um and kim coach teams they will play the same way and and our kids will know that and and they'll be aware of that as well we have time for one more question from the red zone for coach let's see her online everybody's good all right well good coach thank you very much thank for your you. time thank best you. of luck tomorrow we thank you for joining us here this afternoon in baton rouge once again lsu michigan tomorrow night 6 30 tip here in Baton Rouge, televised on ESPN. And we will be back with you tomorrow night post-game for interviews with both Michigan and LSU. Until then, thanks for joining us in Baton Rouge. We'll see you tomorrow.